One question, Carl. The, uh, the color of this impressive, majestic-looking sphere, uh, the color, it's blue. Yes. Uh, why is it blue? There's two reasons why, uh, why Neptune is blue. It's a very lovely, austere kind of blue to, to me. Uh, one reason, part of the reason, is the same reason that the Earth sky is blue. And uh, this just has to do with the, the scattering of light by, uh, by air. Uh, light of all colors comes from the sun. The blue light is preferentially bounced around by the air molecules. And so that makes the sky blue in all directions. The red light doesn't get bounced around, and so it preferentially comes through. That's why when you see the sun setting, the blue light gets scattered out of the beam, the red light stays in, and the sunset looks red. And the sunset should look red on any planet which has a, a massive atmosphere, including Neptune. The other reason that Neptune is blue is because its air is made of a different composition than ours, and it has a, a lot of a gas called methane, and methane actually absorbs uh, red light. So it lets the blue light through. There's two different reasons why it has this beautiful color blue. Incredible. The planet Neptune has um, an interior, correct, that somehow generates heat. Um, what is that? What is the composition of that interior? You're asking hard questions, <laughs> Sidney. We can only see the outside. Yeah. So our compositional information, direct compositional information from the light that bounces off uh, Neptune, uh, is restricted only to the outside. We have a basic understanding of what kind of stuff there is in the universe and some very halting and preliminary understanding of how worlds form. And on the basis of that, we can calculate what the stuff ought to be deep inside. I don't have huge confidence in this because, you know, we've never been deep inside. The reason for the, the heat that it's giving off uh, is that, so to say, Neptune is not yet finished being formed. When planets are formed, matter is falling in, attracted by their mutual gravitational attraction. And in the case of the Earth, of course, it has long since completed its formation. But the gas giants are still gravitationally contracting. And the heat that is generated by this still slow collapse is thought to be responsible for what is radiating out from, uh, from Neptune. Um, Trident, where is the picture of that remarkable place? This picture, there seems, it looks to me like a, a freeway, a nest of freeways coming together <laughs> at one intersection. Um, it, it, there's a, there, it seems like an X. It also seems like uh, deep valleys running uh, in, in a line. Mm -hmm. And then another deep valley running for uh, apparently thousands of miles, and it crosses the other. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the, the width of, uh, of the highway is, uh, uh, or oh, maybe uh, 10 miles. It's a 10 mile wide highway. So if, they, if this is a highway, they got <laughs> big cars. <laughs> this is complex ice geology. It's a low temperature world. With, with uh, overlaid with uh, many different kinds of ice, methane ice, nitrogen ice, probably some ordinary water ice uh, as well, although we haven't been able to found, find any yet. And there are energy sources inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, so things get melted. Things, pieces of the crust collapse. Um, there are uh, the, the hot place in the local spring and summer makes huge amounts of ice vaporize and rush away to the cold part of the, of the world. And that cold world gets enormous amounts of snow uh, on it, these exotic snows, methane and nitrogen. And that uncovers material over where the snow uh, uh, evaporated from. Uh, uh, and that happens on short periods of time. The, the season on Triton is about 100 years. Uh, the year is, uh, for seasons is about 100 years long. There are countless 
numbers of radio waves, sizes, frequencies, etc., mm -hmm. in the atmosphere, everywhere, not only within uh, the atmosphere of the Earth, but beyond the Earth, radio waves and sounds. How is it possible that that particular frequency is not weakened, is not polluted, is not interfered with, it travels an absolute course to the, the brain of Voyager 2 and speaks to it. That's right. Exactly as you intended to. Beautifully said. That's exactly right. It's literally true. Um, and there are sources of interference, and the signal is fantastically weak. Much weaker the signal the spacecraft sends back to us because it just has this little antenna and this feeble power source. We have very large telescopes and we can put enormously powerful transmitters and so it can hear us uh, in a way better than we can hear it but we're very good at hearing it as well um, it uh, it knows to listen to uh, certain frequencies and not to others and uh, and we shout loud that's sort of the, the, the answer to your question yes it's, it's, it's mind-boggling to us lay people and no, to me too to yes, me too it's yes. nothing about i mean i understand the physics of it but that doesn't in any way take away the wonder the wonder that's the phrase the wonder of it and carl sagan will introduce us to the other end of the communications bridge voyager 2 after this <laughs>